okay so now come back to the so as i explained this is our first class so first we need to know like what is a spring so why we want to learn the spring here getting the point so why the previous technologies are deprecated so i am going to give the uh, the small introduction of the previous technolo uh, technology so why the uh, like uh, the rod jansen is introduced the spring so what are the drawbacks we will have so basically if you are observing the pre uh, before spring we are going to uh, have the technology called ujb so enterprise java bean whenever we are working on the enterprise java bean so any class whenever we are trying to create a pojo classes pojo classes in the times of call so for example so something call we are going to have person class we are going to have person class in the person class what are the fields we are going to define so something call id right so the so to index uh, like i identify based on the id like we are going to identify the the person name everything name of the person getting the point and one more here so something call address one more here address simply i am trying to define something call adr adr is indicating as a address so this is the name of the class and the class having some of the properties so these are the three properties id name and address but in the ejp whenever we are uh, writing this kind of the pojo classes what we need to do here so we need to implement one interface here we need to implement one interface the interface name call session beans so here the one drawback i am explaining here whenever we are making any class we have to be implemented by the one interface call one interface call session bean so without the session bean if you are going to write any class like this so it will not compile and it will not it's going to execute so in the which technology i am going to write this uh, the implement session bean in the ejb technologies but here come back to the our spring technology whenever we are defining any pojo class or the any model class we don't want to implement any class so here without using like we don't have a like in the particular class we don't want to implement this class also in the ejb technology so it must be implemented by this interface so even though in the future like after implementing today in the tomorrow day after tomorrow we don't want to use this particular interface right and we don't have a option to use this interface in future so even though we have to be implemented by this interface that is in the ejb technologies okay and here one more drawback i am going to explain here the drawback here whenever we are developing the core java related application core java related application what we are going to write here so basically basically how we are going to write here so something call i am i'm going to create one one class called test and here to create an object in java so what are the steps we need to follow to create an object what are the steps we need to follow in the core java any idea import the class create a method import the package so <clears throat> we are having some knowledge uh, like core java related so can you please respond like i have a one class the name of the class i am going to create like test so i want to create an object of this particular test class to create a method no idea no idea class okay so observe here yeah good so test t is equals to new test test t is equals to so new test here what is the new year and what is the test year 
So what is the new here? Why we need to define this particular new keyword here? It will allocate memory. Are so other people one person suggested like we need to create a new array right so basically new is a operator to create an object of which class the name of the class here this test, test. and here but this is indicating this is indicating the constructor of the the class so which class the constructor here the test class constructor this is the test class constructor and here how many constructors are available so in this case we defined only one but uh, normally in the uh, test class how many constructors we can create okay so basically in whenever we are creating any class so we can create one is parameterized constructor and one more is default constructor one is parameterized constructor and one is default constructor and if you are not creating any constructor in the class this particular constructor will be available so this is known as a default constructor so whenever we are making parameterized constructor so we have to be defined by the the default constructor as well and in the parameterized constructor so we can define the the uh, like data types so different like string and integers long so something called boolean char whatever based on our requirement we can define and in the java like in the core java we are going to have overloaded constructors the overloaded constructors so the topic is different but make sure the simple answer here we are going to have parameterized constructor and do default constructor so what is doing what is the purpose of this particular default constructor here why we need to define this here so why i need to define this particular default constructor whenever i am going to create a object of the particular class so in our example a test okay so basically now again i am trying to define so just imagine this is our test class in the test class what i am doing here i'm trying to create like one in something called integer is a data type and id is a id is a one property so same thing one is i am having string here i am having string and here the string having the property call the string data type having the property call name so just imagine the test class having how many properties here two properties one is the name and one more, one more is id so whenever whenever we are creating like whenever we are calling this particular default constructor what it will do is going to initialize the default values of these two properties is going to initialize the default values of each property and can i know like what is the default value of this particular int data type zero right so the zero and do some uh, the string something called like is going to initialized by the who this particular default constructor so that is the purpose of we need to use this constructor here to initialize the the values of each property getting the point now you have identified something called the constructor how we are going to create and how the, the new operator is going to work but when we come to the the spring terminology here here what we are going to do so we are going to define the classes what are the classes we are going to use in our application we are not going to create any 
object of the particular each class here right but here who is going to create an object here who is going to create an object here in the spring technology we are going to have an option called container the container is going to create an object what are the classes we created in our example and he is going to initialize the all the properties whatever the properties we are going to like use like we are going to define in our particular example here okay so now you have identified the one is option call container okay we'll see what are the containers are available in the spring technology okay but now what so one drawback we identified from the ejb and another from the from the java technology whenever we are defining so we have to create an object and we have to define the the properties and we have to initialize the every each and every property right now here what we are going to do here in the spring technology we will just we are going to define the the properties and the name of the class information so that the container is going to create classes and is going to initialize the property so here we have identified one is advantages we are going to get from the spring and one drawback we have seen from the ejb so whenever we are defining the pojo classes or the model classes in the spring we are not going to implement any the particular bean related interfaces here okay so these are the information like drawbacks and advantages we are going to get from the spring so now come back to the spring what are the modules are available in the spring what are the modules are available in the spring the first module is core and this is the basic module and is going to like extended to the all other modules so this is the core module so from the core module so we can develop or if you are interested you can develop the application using the core modules also right so not only core module we are going to have orm module and here so and before orm we are going to have jdbc module we are going to have jdbc and from the orm so after that we will have another module here that is mvc and later we'll work on the so another module called jms so these are the the basic modules are available in the spring technology and here this all the this module sorry is extended from the this all the modules are is extended from the core module so what are the informations are available in the core module so we will see okay just we just i am going to give an introduction once the core module is completed so we will going to work on the jdbc and after the jdbc we will work on the orm and after the orm we will work on the mvc and last we will work on the jms so this is the way our agenda like our daily sessions are going to work here so now come back to the the core module right so in the core module what are the components are available here in the core module what are the components are available so the first one is called dependency injection the first one called dependency injection that is nothing but di right and one more as i explain container one more container okay so we'll focus on the these two information how is going to work what is the dependency injection and what is the container so the container here we are going to have two information one is the bean factory and one more is application context so we'll see and these are the two interfaces are available in the spring so how each interface is going to work we'll see okay so come back to the the dependency injection so basically in the java if we want to create another object so how we are going to create here so i have a one class again i am trying to define the test only okay or we can work on the instead of test what i can do so i will try to focus on the real time example here 
person getting the point so this person whenever i am trying to create a this person object i want to create a dependent object so example in the family member this the person having like father getting the point so he's going to have children here so the children how we are going to create so person p is equals to person p is equals to new person so something called this is the constructor i'm defining here the p and inside this particular default constructor how i'm defining here so this is the our constructor right this is the our constructor so something called i'm trying to define child child is equals to and here i'm what i'm doing here i'm trying to define the one new operator and the class name i'm making here the class name call child and here the class name and i'm making as a one default constructor so now what you are understanding is whenever i'm trying to call whenever i'm trying to call this particular person related constructor what is we are, what we are doing internally what we are doing here so here we are tightly coupled with the child object we are tightly coupled with the child object whenever this particular constructor is going to call from this line number something line number 4 just you can imagine whenever this constructor is going to call internally the child object we are going to create the child object we are going to create it here so this is nothing but we are making two object as a tightly coupled so instead of making tightly coupled what we can do here so we can make the loose coupling here injecting interface here so whenever the each class is implemented from the interface so instead of making the child object here instead of making the child as a class level reference we can make as a interface reference so whenever this particular constructor is going to call of the the person class so we can define whatever the object we want to create at run time so initially we want to create a uh, child object but sometimes we want to create some child one or child two but this going to the this option is going to available from the whenever we are going to implement the particular class from the interface so i will explain how exactly this particular dependency injection will work but just i want to show some introduction like to work on the the two object instead of working the tight coupling we can work on the loose coupling this feature is achieved from the spring right and another one the container so the container what is going to do here the container is going to initialize and is going to instantiate the, the particular class so whenever we are going to provide the information some information in our xml or annotation that we will see later okay so now this you have identified so as i explain here these are the two information are uh, available in the core module but before going to start this core uh, two modules here first we want to know like who is the author of the the spring here who is the author of the spring here so the name of the author here rod johnson getting the point the rod johnson is defined alex is only the author of the spring framework and he identified the some of the drawbacks in the previous technologies based on the previous technology drawbacks he implemented this particular spring framework here and here this is the open source frameworks so can you tell me what is the open source framework any idea what is the open source meanwhile i will try to write rod johnson any idea what is the open source here so open source is nothing but we can able to see all the classes and interfaces and structure of the the particular framework here so if you see some of the technologies 
so that is uh, like we cannot able to access or we can able to see the what is the information available inside the frameworks but in come to the spring so we can able to see all the classes how we can see so based on the jars so whenever we are going to add the jars in the particular application we can able to see what are the classes are available in the particular each jar so that is we are going to call as a open source here and do whenever this particular spring framework is introduced by the raw jans initially initially it is a how much mb is taken around 2 okay so what i want to show here when the this initial size of this particular framework here it's having 2.5 mb but now the particular uh, uh, size of the framework is increased because they are going they added lot of features in the spring so just i'm trying to explain when the initial release is uh, when the initial release the application having 2.5 mb right so these are the two information and do basically the spring core module is going to provide the fundamental of the function of then first one is the bean factory so the bean factory how is going to work here so we'll have a one simple example to work on this particular bean factory related okay so to work on this particular example what we need to do here to work on this particular example what we need to do here so we need to create one application so i'm trying to create one application here So it is a Java project, and do Spring zero seven. I am trying to create. Okay, that's it, and finish. Don't create any module. Change the perspective. Okay, now what I want to do. so as of now don't worry because i'm trying to convert into maven project here
this is converted she is trying to add some dependencies of this particular maven here okay now what i'm what i'm doing here inside this particular source directory i will create a one interface here I will create one interface. The name name of the interface I am going to create. So something called greeting service. And here I want to specify package name. So something called Java technology. Okay. And now whenever we are defining the particular interface we have to define methods here the method and the return type of the method i am making okay let's see Can you tell me like uh, the screen is clear now? No. 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 Oh. Uh, yes. So I'm not sure. Like uh, I don't have any. Uh, what about now? is good okay <clears throat> okay now so the method having the return type here void and the name of the method so simple i'm trying to define say greeting say greeting okay now what i need to do here simply i define one interface so can we create an object for this particular interface can we create an object <laughs> guys uh, can you please respond so this is a simple the core java related question okay good so now what i need to do here so to create an object what i need to do here so i want to create an object of this particular greeting service no idea no idea exactly so basically whenever we are trying to define any interface this particular interface is implemented by one class okay so then only we can create an object of this particular sorry this particular interface here so now what i am doing here i am trying to define the class here the name of the class i am taking greeting service the greeting service i am fill so impl is indicating here this is a implementation class here now observe here and is implemented from which interface the interface name call greeting service okay now we have to implement one in method which is available in a particular interface here okay now i provided the implementation of the method but here before providing the method what i am doing is i am trying to provide one property here 
the name of the property i am taking a greeting and i am making one constructor here and it is the one constructor it is nothing but the parameter is constructor i am taking here and this dot greeting is equals to greeting so just here one more question here why i am using this why i am using this particular any idea so to indicate instance of that method which method so greeting service imp is a method okay <clears throat> so to indicate instance of that method but you are specifying it is a constructor so what is the correct answer can you please tell me like we are having so why i am using the this here yes so to point to the current class object so one <coughs> that is correct and referring to the class level variables okay and if i am going to remove uh, this particular this what will happen here if i am going to remove this what will happen what is the local variable and what is the the class level variables sorry that is not a method it is a constructor of the class that is a constructor of the class here okay so simple i want to explain here so thanks for like uh, answering the question whatever i am asking here okay observe here basically this is the constructor of the class so most of the people they are assume this is the method this is not a this is not a method so here simple answer here whenever we are creating a method the method must be available some return type the return type like void or string integer any data type so if the the particular the name having any return type we can like we can define like th that is name of the method and whenever the particular name it does not have anything so this we can treat it as a constructor and here the constructor name it should be the name of the class so this is a way also we can easily identify whether it is a constructor or method right now we got and some uh, information regarding how we can identify constructor or method okay so come back to this line number 6 here whenever the constructor i am defining one parameter here string greeting the string greeting this particular variable can only access within the scope of this particular constructor up to the 6 to 8 line number only we can access if i am going to access the same variable inside this particular method called say greeting say greeting we are going to get an a some error here if i am not defining this method, the class level variable so observe here it is giving an a some error now you can observe here greeting cannot be resolved to a variable 
why it is giving because we already defined the same greeting right so the scope here up to the the constructor of the the particular class only we can access whenever we are making any variable at the parameter level getting the point so parameters are nothing but the parameters we are going to define inside this particular brace right this parameter variable can only access this is the scope but to access the same variable outside of this particular constructor so same example i want to access this the same variable inside this particular method right inside this particular method now what i can do so <coughs> based on the the local variable scope we cannot access so what we can do what have what is an another option here so to access the same information first what we need to do here we need to create class level variables we need to create a class level variables and whatever the information we are going to get from the the local variable i am trying to assign into the the class level variable assigning is nothing but i am trying to initialize whatever the information we are going to get from the the local variable now so you can imagine this is the class level variable and this is the local variable what i am doing here the local variable value i am assigning into the or i am initializing into the class level variables so now here i am using the class level variables because the local variable we cannot use here getting the point now coming to the the this keyword here so basically what is doing here this particular this keyword he is going to like eliminate the naming conflict here whenever we are defining the local variable and instance or the class level variable we are making as a same okay to differentiate who is the local variable and what is the instance variable what i am going to write here i am going to make as a this here so basically the this keyword is going to point to the the current class object and who is the current class here this particular greeting service i mpl is a current class right and inside this particular current class what is the variable we are having the variable call greeting right so this is the way we can access this dot greeting this is indicating the class level variable and this greeting is indicating local variable now what i am doing here i am trying to assign i am trying to initialize this particular greeting value to the class level we can work on this particular this keyword and not only this variable we I am doing, and we created one service here, the greeting service we created, and it's having one method called say greeting, and we implemented the particular interface to the class. Uh, what is the class here? The name of the class we taken here, greeting service IMPL, and it is having one property. What is the name of the property? Something called greeting. Right. Now, now. so basically here i want to provide one more information so something call so something call set greeting so as of now don't worry what it is so you can imagine it's like a one method how we are to find java example so this dot again i need to use say here okay now so to call this particular say greeting so just i want to know like in the java knowledge 
how we how we are going to call i want to call this particular say greeting i want to call this particular say greeting method so what are the steps we need to follow to call this particular method so can you please uh, explain me who are having knowledge So no idea. Okay. So I will explain. So basically, our terminology. So definitely, we are going to have one main method, right? And we are going to define inside the main method, right? Now, so here. Class object we are going to create here. What is the name of the class? Greeting service I am here. I say sorry, professor. You communicate with me. Greeting service I am here class. Okay. So, what? So, greeting service I am pill. Right. So, can I take greeting service here? So, something called greeting service is equals to. New greeting service I M P L. Can I take here? Can I take here interface reference? No running I. Something called new test I define, but here test is a test is a class. Okay. Now, so what is the difference between the reference here class or interface? If I am going to create here greeting service I M P L, or if I am going to Going to so yeah, how the particular loose coupling is going to work because this same rating service as well. observe here so basically basically what i want to show here here one more question here what i define one interface that is called a greeting service the interface can be implemented by for then class or not so i am trying to implement the same greeting service to the other classes as well So instead of implementing the greeting service I M P L, I want to implement other in, in classes called greeting service I M P L one and the greeting service I M P L two. So is it possible? <clears throat> That is wrong. So interface cannot extend it.
yes i am asking like whether can i implement the same interface to the other classes or not i am not asking any keywords here yes right so imagine i have this particular same greeting service is implemented one is greeting service ampl and one is greeting service ampl 1 okay and one more is greeting service ampl 2 so now so the greeting service is implemented in implementation classes here observe here so what i am doing here okay and i forget to explain here and each greeting service ml having one method what is the method name here something called say greeting sir So here something called GSI. So GSI is nothing but greeting service ML. This particular say greeting service is going to print this message, and the same greeting service method is going to provide some information called implementation of one. Okay, is going to append the GSI here. Let me write the GSI here. Uh, okay. Now uh, the problem is going to solve. Okay. Now you can observe here. So this particular say greeting method we have to be overridden each implementation classes, right? Nothing but GSI two. Okay. So now here observe here, and here I am taking interface reference. So something called GST is equals to new new is the operator. We have to specify the constructor. So, which constructor I want to specify here? Which constructor I want to specify? So, which class yes. object we are going to create? We can specify here. Okay, observe here. So, something called the first one I want to specify here. G S I. The first class object I want to specify here. So, G S I is nothing but greeting service I M P L. The greeting service I M P L having default constructor. That greeting service having the default constructor. No, it's not having the default constructor. It is having. So it is having the parameters constructor. The parameters constructor is for taking here. It is a string data type is taking. So something I want to specify here. So make sure some test I am giving here. Okay. some test i want to give it. okay observe here whenever we are making interface reference here whenever we are, we are making the interface reference here we have a option to change this particular constructor we have a option to change the particular constructor right and here based on this constructor based on this particular constructor the say greeting method is going to call based on this particular constructor the say greeting method will call so how we are going to call so something call t dot say greeting t dot say greeting method the say greeting method is is available from now the say greeting is available from the interface not the class because here we are making a reference interface not the implementation class here so how is going to call how is going to call the the overridden the say greeting method basically just we are calling the method here here we are calling the method but the calling method is going to call somewhere 
wherever the same method is implemented the method is going to executed here if we observe here how is how the terminology is going to work so what it will do so if if you are working on the java side java side what the compiler what it will do compiler is going to check compiler is going to check here the interface and uh, the interface method is having the name uh, method name called say greeting and uh, once the say greeting is identify the compiler what it's going to do is going to check the constructor of the class constructor of the class and uh, whenever the particular constructor is going to call the java compiler is going to call the like is going to identify the the implementation class and this is our first implementation class and inside the implementation class whether the say greeting method is overrided or not is going to check by the compiler if it is override if it is override is going to call this particular the say greeting override method getting the point so this is the way is going to perform and if i'm not going to define the interface reference here if i'm going to define directly the class level the class level reference called the greeting service imple what it will do the java compiler instead of going the interface what it will do directly it will go to the class and is going to check the is going to check the the method inside the method like inside the class whatever the method is available the say greeting is going to call so now but here when we are making object to the class level to the so instead of making the interface level and if you are making the class level here and if i'm going to change here if i'm going to change instead of so greeting service i am pill i want to make to the greece greeting service i am pill to i want to make greeting service i am pill to so is it possible to call so just changing just changing this constructor here just changing the constructor okay. so in the java in java if you are making class level reference compiler is going to give an error compiler is going to give an error but how we can achieve that we can achieve using the interface reference that we can achieve interface reference because this particular interface also is implemented in also is implemented in greeting service impl2 getting the point so because of this particular implementation whenever we are going to change the constructor so we are not going to get any the compilation errors the compilation errors so this is the way the loose coupling we can achieve right and now to create an object now what are the steps we need to follow in java terminology so first we need to follow inside the main method right inside the main method so first we can create we can create here interface reference as well class level reference so we can work on the any reference here because the greeting service sample is implemented from the greeting service interface so something called greeting service s is equals to new gsi gsi is nothing but greeting service sample it's having one parameterized constructor right and guess dot s dot say greeting s dot say greeting now this particular greeting method will go is going to call the particular say greeting method is going to call but here so as i explained in the spring we are not going to create we are not going to create an object but how how the container know so we are expecting this particular class to be created right getting the point so we want to share some information to the container because in the java we are already aware of the name of the classes so we'll create a manually and we'll test it to the object but here so as i explained we are not going to create an object but the container is going to create that is perfect but what we need to do here how the container know so these are the classes so to provide the information to the container so we have to define some information so the information we have to define in the xml getting the point 
so that we can cover in the tomorrow and how we can prepare the xml and how the container is going to load the xml file and after loading the xml file how the container is going to create so that we will see in the tomorrow class and so if you are having any questions regarding the up to what we discuss in the today let me know i will try to cover up okay so like you don't have any problem or if you don't you don't have any queries so we can conclude yeah tomorrow also same time so can you explain this starting point starting part excuse me sir did you hear me Java, but I don't know what is the difference spring and normal Eclipse. So here, basically, so instead of taking, because basically, whenever we are uh, like practicing or developing an application, we used to work on the uh, some Notepad plus plus or uh, Edit plus plus some ID, <clears throat> right? Notepad related uh, IDs. But here, so to work on the more. i am using eclipse here because we need to specify the more files here so this is a better option so instead of notepad so we can work on the edit plus plus so like sorry eclipse so in eclipse we will have by default the java compiler is available so if you are having any so compilation issues so like while developing any classes is going to provide the information so that we can see based on the daily example you are going to have how this particular eclipse is going to work here okay but here in the real time applications also we are going to use eclipse yes. whether eclipse or net beans or intellij but almost all the ids are same so some each and other ids having some specific difference here but other than this all the ids are going to work same technology to know about spring so spring that is um, this is our today first class right so i will cover don't worry okay <clears throat> 